Hi, thanks for joining us. Um, um, during the last two sessions, um, several folks mentioned NCAL, the National Center for um, Abuse of Later Life, Abuse in Later Life. Um, this has been one of the department's long-standing programs training across various specialties on how to address and combat elder abuse. Um, Janice Green is a senior program specialist with OVW and has basically been leading this program for many years. Um, this is her brainchild. This is one of the crown jewels of the department's training efforts. And so I wanted to give Janice a couple of minutes, and she's right outside, to tell you about the program and to encourage you all to consider applying for it. So, Janice. Thank you. Please. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, again, my name is Janice Green. I'm a senior program specialist with the Office on Violence Against Women. The Abuse and Later Life program has been at OVW since 2002. What we enable communities to do is we provide funding and training and services and technical assistance so that communities can work together to identify cases of abuse in later life or elder abuse and also to make sure that the victims get the support that they need so that they can get to safety and to healing. The way that we do that is our grantees receive awards and with those awards, which can be anywhere from 400 to $750,000, depending on the size of your community for a four year period, we have worked with national experts to develop training materials. So, for example, one of the things that we do with our grantees, we have you send us a multidisciplinary training team of law enforcement, prosecution, advocates, and those working with older individuals. That training team comes together, they meet with us, we teach them over a three day period how to come back to your communities and do an eight hour law enforcement training. That enables you because you have those local folks to keep that 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 knowledge base in your community and they are able to do those trainings again and again over the life of the grant and so some of our grantees are as small as six law enforcement officers and then we've had communities that have trained over 700 officers using this training technique we do the same sort of thing for victim service providers because we know quite often there are services in your community but everyone works in silos and you don't always know who to reach out to at two o'clock in the morning and so we do a training a cross training to bring the various stakeholders to come together so that they have the same sort of language and understanding about what abuse in later life is and also so that they know who else is doing this work in their community that they can work with in order to create wraparound services for victims. We support a coordinated community response. It's a little different than an MDT. Most MDTs are looking on a case basis. We look at the picture from a higher level. We look at it from 30,000 feet. Who should be at the table? Who should be working together? How do we ensure that no matter how a victim comes into the, into the system, whether it's a case where law enforcement finds the individual or whether it's a, a social worker in a hospital, how do we make sure that no matter how an older victim comes into the system, that they're going to get access to the support and the services that they need in order to become whole again? And then the last thing that we do is we provide funding for victim services. So up to 25, a minimum of 25% of the grant funds have to go to victim services. And while the training and all of those first pieces are very much directed by us as to how that's done, the victim service piece is up for your communities to do a needs assessment and really determine what are the needs, unique needs of older individuals in your communities and how can you best support older victims in your communities, whether it's providing emergency housing, transitional housing, or paying for a case manager because they just need help figuring out all of the different places that there are resources and how in order to do that. So I'm at a table outside. I've got a flyer with my contact information. If you are interested and think that your community might be a good fit for the program, please feel free to stop by. If you're just curious, feel free to stop by, pick up a brochure. We will have a new solicitation coming out in the next couple of months. And I would love to, to talk to any of you um, either today, tomorrow, or feel free to just reach out and let's have a conversation about how we can get money to your communities in order to help victims become safer and also how to hold offenders accountable. Thank you very much, Andy, for the time. <laughs> 